did you know that the word news is an acronym it actually stands for notable events weather and sport and today's notable event is we're back at the motorist in Sherburn and Elmet for the coffee and cars meet featuring furious driving and we're starting with the car you always promised yourself a collection of Ford Capris from the Capri Club International with a gaggle of cars featuring everything from this work in progress complete with scale model replica on the dashboard to an amazing V8 conversion looking great there in white There's even a South African Piranha edition. Not to mention all the owners there lining up to get shot and um, have the photo taken for the day. Then there's this adorable Morgan F4 from 1936. The model with the engine under the bonnet rather than having the engine poking out at the front of the car between the wheels. I'm not sure if this one would be classed as a convertible or a drop head. And here's a selection of Hyundai, um, Hyundai, Hyundai, Hyundai anyway, uh, the coupés, uh, everything from standard to modified. I'm sure it's Hyundai. Might be Hyundai. No, no, I'm convinced it's Hyundai. As well as this lovely Triumph Dolomite and Ford Sierra. Just look at this wonderful Aston Martin DBS, dates from 1970. And of course, DBS just simply means, well, the S means it's the ultimate production Aston Martin. And as most people know, the DB stands for David Brown, who bought Aston Martin in 1947 for 20,500 pound and then sold it in 1972. Also found this 1979 Cadillac Seville. It's a 350 diesel, but the owner assured me that it hasn't had any of the electrical problems that most of these did at the time. It does come complete with self-leveling air suspension and would you believe it's still on its original brake pipes. Then there's the beautifully designed Project Nigel Rover parked up in amongst a selection of various other Rovers including a Tomcat, there's even a Mercedes Estate and another Porsche. There's also this mean looking Triumph Herald 1360 from 1969. Then from Furious Driving, there's Matt Rover 75, complete with its new battery that it needed in order to get there on the day. And there's also this 1984 Vauxhall Carlton 2000, as well as Mark on Motorings Renault Megan Fiji. Phew, what a gorgeous pair of mid 80s 6 Series BMWs. Shining example there, harking back to the days of the Yuppie. There's a third generation Chevy Camaro, IROC Z or IROC Z if you prefer in England. Oh, I can feel the mullet growing as we speak. 
Now, coffee and cars at the motorist is all about exactly that. Come get a coffee, look at the cars. There's absolutely no theme whatsoever. Any age is covered. So any cars that you own, that you want to come down in, have a coffee, talk to a few people, have a look at some of the cars kicking about. All cars are welcome. No limits. Lovely Volvo estate coming in there. That would please Jeff, wouldn't it? A Jeff by size. Thank you. A lovely selection of varied cars all over the place. And of course, some really happy people coming around as well. <coughs> this Volkswagen van stands out in the bright yellow that it is. An amazing selection of cars here. I think there's something for everybody. All ages, all designs, all models. The absolutely wonderful Mercedes G-Wagon there. And I'm guessing that registration might be a little bit valuable. Yeah. Well, we've got this yellow Seat. I think he must have had a problem on the way down with the bumps because it looks like his suspension's collapsed. Of course, if you know who he is, he'd like you to send him nudes. Not getting involved in that. So there's all manner of uh, wonderfully exciting and wonderfully boring cars here as well. Spotted the Lotus. I have to say, next to that Ford Galaxy, this Lotus looks tiny. And very minimalistic inside as well. But what else do you need? Apart from the speed, of course, you've got to have the speed. And then there's this, which, according to the radiator grill, is a monster. Doesn't look very monstrous, unless it sounds monstrous. Suzuki Ignis. Strange cars. Looks good though. Mark Three Fiesta there. And then from this side, we've got the glorious rear view of this gaggle of Capris. Is it a gaggle of Capris or is it a collection of Capris? All parked up there. Nice Mark 1 with wide arches. Standard Mark 1 down there, the red one. What is it with BMWs these days? The place seems to be full of BMWs. I'm not going to fill them all because they're just BMWs. Range Rover. Very nice Saab estate. I think that's the one before they turned into Vauxhall Vectras. Looks the part though, especially with those wheels on. Just sits really well. And depending on what channels you watch or elsewhere on YouTube, you may know this car. 
and you can find him by searching Scottish Car Enthusiasts and Trains TV. All the way down from Edinburgh this morning, he made the trip specially. Nissan El Grand. Another Saab Estate. This one's for sale. So if anybody wants a Saab Estate, pause that, get the details, get in touch. And we appear to have a foursome of Nissan El Grands in various stages. Possibly the Japanese version of the old Volkswagen camper van. And then I found this lovely Mark III Cortina. Coke bottle styling along the rear wings. Cortina XL 76 on a P plate. Apparently, it's been safety checked. Still a Cortina though, isn't it? That kind of gives away who it is. So this one will probably belong to Crazy Chris from Pluto Motors. So he'll be around here somewhere. Lovely looking Mark III Cortina. It's just a shame it's on the facelifted Mark IV Cortina dashboard rather than the better pre-facelift Slokey dashboard. Got to love a Mark III Cortina though. It's Porsche there. Another Rover 75. They seem to be big today. There's a lot of those here. Estates and saloons. And of course the one that drove past for a few moments ago. This lovely 86 or 87 third generation Chevy Camaro. And it's the IROC Z as well, or the IROC Z as they say in the States. Correct lights for the IROC, correct wing mirrors. Sea top version as well. And of course the fake louvers on the bonnet. I found a Vauxhall Nova. SR flavour. It's in tidy condition for being a Nova. I thought they'd all be max powered by now and there was none of these original ones left. That's really nice though. found a Volkswagen Beetle without the patina or the rust well there's a small amount on the bonnet there or is that the trunk or is it the boot or is it the frunk hard to tell these days a bit more on that side as well I wouldn't say many Volkswagen Beetles in that kind of condition though I'm more used to saying the more settled as a rat rods these days than uh, genuine Beetles that's really nice I like that Lovely Lancia. I won't see many of these. Mostly because I think a lot of them in the early days over here just crumbled and rotted away to nothing. Well, that's a nice one. Lancia Beta, 2 litre, 
IE. What a nice looking thing. Feel like that. Another selection of Lancia's over here as well. Mark 1 Golf. Wide tyres. Great headlights though. Love those headlights. It's actually a nice car all round. Even a Fiat Punto convertible today. Lovely Honda estate. Walk next to its younger brother. Nice to see the pair of them together. Just spotted this. Bike on the back's almost as big as the car. Very nice. Must be all in original condition as well. What you can see in there through the window. Unusual to see one bike on the back like that though. And on that note, as the Capri is leaving, complete with trailer, it's time to head home as well. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching it. See you in the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now.